Asahi, an ugly virgin loser who couldn't get laid even if it was to save his own worthless life, saves a child from getting hit by Truckkun at the cost of his own life. Upon dying, he sees white light and gets transported into a Bethesda-style RPG. He immediately bumps into a dragon and upon checking his stats, realizes that he's E rank and the only skill in his arsenal is level one stone throwing. As the dragon gets ready to put him out of his misery for good, he screams for his big sister, Maya. <laughs> A magic circle lights up and his big sister is brought into the game. Unlike Asahi, she is reincarnated as an SS rank and she effortlessly one-shots the dragon. After catching up, the siblings decide to head to town. On their way, they find orcs destroying a remote village. Asahi tells the orcs to stand down if they don't want to get clapped. The orcs decide to call his bluff and charge at him with full force. Luckily for him, Maya steps in and claps them all. Asahi takes all the credit for it though, and this results in his rank fraudulently rising from rabbit class, the lowest ranking, to ogre class, the fourth highest ranking. He begs Maya to let him take credit for every villain she defeats, so that he reaches higher ranks, and she agrees to do it, but only on the condition that he gives her a squeeze. They then see the townsfolk giving the hero's party a send-off. As soon as the hero's party leaves, a viking from Ohio genuinely starts tweaking. Since Asahi is the highest ranked adventurer on the scene, and word on the street says that he single-handedly saved a village from orcs, the townsfolk leave it up to him. Terrified that he's about to be exposed, he begs Maya to back him up and promises to give her whatever she wants later. Maya says bet, and Asahi tells the Viking that his mama is so fat that when she got on a scale, it said we need your weight, not your phone number. The Viking gets triggered, and Asahi sways his right hand. Just like that, the ground is destroyed, and everyone, including the Viking, stares in disbelief. Witnessing this great power, the Viking bows down to Asahi, apologizes for causing trouble, and bolts. The townsfolk cheer for Asahi. When they leave the scene, Maya reminds Asahi that he owes her anything she wants. Asahi decides to do his next quest solo like a real Sigma male. Since he doesn't want to take Maya with him on this one, he avoids picking difficult quests and takes a level one mushroom picking quest. While he's picking the shrooms, he almost wets himself when he sees a bear warning sign. He works out the odds of actually bumping into a bear to about 1%. That is, until he notices the bear standing behind him. He starts running for his pathetic life and the bear chases him. Right when he's about to get mauled, the bear gets blasted into pieces and he lands in what he assumes are big Sis Maya's toys. He starts glazing Maya like crazy until he realizes it's not her. The woman's name is Kilmaria. Asahi thanks Kilmaria for saving him, but his gratitude comes a little bit too early as a hundred more bears show up and decide to jump them. When the bears start charging, Kilmaria tosses him into the air like a frisbee, claps all the bears and catches him. The leader, Kaiser Bear shows up and shoots them with a tailed beast bomb. But Kilmaria places Asahi inside her milkers, and they both come out unharmed. Kilmaria then goes, my turn, and proceeds to one-shot Kaiser Bear. After witnessing Kilmaria's terrifying strength, Asahi asks who she is, and she tells him that she's one of the Demon King's generals. Hearing this, Asahi decides to get as far away as he can from the crazy bit. She tries to assure him that he has nothing to worry about, because she doesn't fight weaklings like him. But this doesn't fully convince Asahi. So while Kilmaria is busy yapping, he decides to sneak away. Problem is, he accidentally drops his guild ID, which is written that he's Ogre class rank. This makes Kilmaria want to fight him. She starts chasing him, asking him to throw hands with her, but gets stopped by a boulder that crashes in front of her. Maya comes in, and asks what Kilmaria intends to do with her little brother, and Kilmaria tells her that she just wants to go one round with him. What do you mean by that? The two girls clash, and Maya dusts Kilmaria. They leave her lying on the ground and go back home. The following day, when Asahi is chased by orcs, his big sister Maya comes to his rescue. She grabs his loot as a reward. 
They go back to town, and Maya tries to take Asahi to Sweet Home, Alabama, but he escapes using his new technique. After narrowly managing to escape Big Sister Maya, he sees a few goons picking on a homeless dude and decides to save him. He gets their attention and gives the homeless dude a chance to escape. But in an instant, the homeless dude stands up and takes them all out. When Asahi gets near, he realizes it's Siegfried, who's become a crackhead. When Asahi asks how the man went from being Dragon Hunter Siegfried to Crack Hunter Siegfried, he explains that after the hero's party left town to defeat the Demon King, somewhere along the way, they all got one-shotted by a single demon. After taking this L, he pretty much lost his sauce. He thanks Asahi for helping him out and continues going about his day. When Asahi gets to the guild, he is alerted about an urgent quest. Tanya asks him to save a remote village from a dragon attack. He's the only high-ranked adventurer available at the moment. Before he can call for Maya, Tanya pushes him into a carriage, and before he knows it, he's in the field like Tom Brady. Luckily for him, Kill Maria shows up in time and prolongs his miserable existence. When he asks what she's doing there, she tells him that she's there to return his guild ID. More dragons appear, and Maya shows up and takes them all out. Kill Maria gets excited seeing Maya again and asks her for a rematch, but Maya leaves her on red and checks on her little bro. When Maya tries to leave with Asahi, Kill Maria drags her back and the two start going back and forth. While they're fighting, a dragon grabs Asahi. After they save him, they call it a day and go their separate ways. Asahi tells Tanya that they're out of rent money and asks for the highest paying quests the guild has. Hearing this, Tanya suggests a quest that offers a house as a reward. She tells him that all he has to do is exercise the evil spirits and ghosts lurking there, and he can basically have the house for free. This scares the hell out of him, but homelessness scares him even more, so he decides to take the quest. When they get to the house, Asahi gets electrocuted when he tries to open the door. The ghost orders them to get their stupid butts off his property. Maya kicks the door down, and the two siblings explore the mansion. The ghost starts attacking Asahi, so Maya calls the ghost out for a one-on-one -on -one fight. Asahi clings onto Maya, as if his pitiful life depends on it. The ghost is impressed by Maya's OP skills, so it decides to just take control of her body. After getting possessed, Maya starts approaching Asahi. At the same time, Kill Maria breaks into the house. Upon hearing that Maya's body is possessed by an evil ghost, Kill Maria challenges Ghost Maya to an arm wrestling match. But she gets packed up and put to sleep. Maya goes back to her little brother. She pins him down and locks eye contact. This is when Asahi figures out that Maya is not being possessed. She's just faking so she can go full Alabama. After getting caught in 4K, Maya drops the act. She tells Asahi that the ghost was exercised the minute it tried to inhabit her body because she's too OP. After tidying up the house, the siblings move into their new home. As the highest ranked adventurer in the guild, Asahi is tasked with investigating a dungeon to determine if it's safe for rookie adventurers to explore. When he and Maya get there, they are stopped by dungeon guardians. Asahi orders her not to use her OP magic in the dungeon so that they don't get buried underground, so she goes Steven Siegel on them instead. When they reach the end of the dungeon, they only find Kaiser Bear's cubs. For the safety of the cubs, they decide to tell the guild to keep the dungeon closed to rookie adventurers. Then decide to head back home, but as soon as they touch grass, Maya wants to go to Sweet Home, Alabama. Asahi tells her to chill out. He says that he has no energy to go Alabama because he's starving. Hearing this, Maya decides to speed home and cook him a meal ASAP. As soon as she leaves, some wild animals appear and chase him back to town. When he gets there, he gets hollered by a cute shorty, but he immediately suspects foul play because he knows deep down that a pathetic loser like him could never pull a woman like her in a million years. He pulls out his sword and asks if it's some sort of prank. The young woman reveals her true form and it's Kill Maria. She tells him that she just wanted to see his town and asks him to show her around. After walking around and getting a couple of drinks, Asahi decides to take Kill Maria back to the crib in an attempt to finally lose his V-card. But his efforts are in vain, as Big Sis Maya makes sure that he doesn't get any action. In a cathedral in the town, a young priestess lady is handed a magic staff. 
She is told that her destiny is to serve alongside the great hero on his journey to save the world. When she asks how to identify this hero, she is told that the great hero is strong, kind, and humble. Asahi gets jumped by a wolf, and for the first time in his sad life, he gets a W on his own. But before he can celebrate, the Wolf King shows up. Big sister Maya comes out and saves his useless butt. She doesn't do it for free though. She asks him to pay her back by letting her give him sloppy sloppy. While running from his perverted big sister, he accidentally bumps into a priestess whose name is Sophie. He apologizes and helps her stand back up. Seeing his kindness and humility, the priestess gets convinced that Asahi is the great hero she is destined to serve under. Her adventure party, made up of complete airheads, shows up, and they start yelling at her for slowing them down. So Sophie says goodbye to Asahi and leaves. When Asahi and Maya go to the guild, Tanya tells them that there's a new party of rookie adventurers that went to explore a dungeon, but never came back. She asks Asahi to go check on them and rescue them if necessary. Sophie gets captured, but Asahi and Maya arrive in time. Maya one-shots the plant army, when she regains consciousness, she remembers being in Asahi's arms and concludes that it was Asahi who single-handedly saved her party. This fully convinces her that he is indeed the great hero. She finds Asahi and thanks him for rescuing her and her mates in the dungeon. She tells him that she's always dreamed about working under the great hero and asks to join his party. Asahi agrees on the condition that her current party's members don't have a problem with it. The airheads in her old party show up and call her out for being more useless than Sakura and almost getting them killed in the dungeon. Sophie claps back by calling them a worthless cannon fodder party. They decide to show Sophie that their hands are rated E for everyone. After starting this mess, Sophie hides behind Asahi and asks him to beat their butts. Seeing that Asahi is about to get the whooping of his life, Maya temporarily blinds everyone using salted pepper and puts all the cannon fodder party members to sleep. After escaping, Asahi backpedals on his decision to let Sophie into their party because he decides that a troublemaker is the last thing he needs. The following day, Asahi gets a quest to collect killer bee honey. Since he's running the risk of getting potentially stung by bees, Tanya suggests that he take a healer with him on this one. The useless Sakura wannabe overhears this and volunteers. Asahi slays a couple of bees and they collect some honey, but Sophie thinks Asahi's fighting is mid so she lures the entire hive back to him to see if he can take out all the bees in one strike the same way he did to the plants in the dungeon. Since running is clearly not an option, Asahi decides to stand on business. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! <laughs> A giant boulder comes out nowhere and crushes the entire beehive. Sophie is amazed. She thanks him for saving her life and takes the collected honey back to town. Maya and Kilmaria pop up. They explain that they accidentally threw a giant boulder in Asahi's direction while they were throwing hands in the forest. They all decide to call it a day. We see a group of ugly, useless villagers watch helplessly from a distance as their village is completely destroyed by the Demon King's army. Maya and Asahi show up and Maya one-shots the leader, prompting the rest of the demons to retreat in fear, leaving only three baby Groot if he was special ed looking mofos when Asahi pulls out his sword to finish these cheap Groot knockoffs, they start spamming Fortnite emotes. Asahi gets hypnotized and starts confessing his love for Big Sis Maya. What? Happy that she can finally take her younger brother to Sweet Home Alabama, Maya gets too excited and jumps on him. Asahi bumps his head and this brings him back to his senses. He tells Maya to stop tweaking. When he charges again to finish the Groots off, Maya tackles him and pins him down. She orders the Groots to hypnotize him again. When he gets hypnotized, Maya starts daydreaming about their wedding. Her fantasy is interrupted when a Cyclops shows up and tells them that he's there to get vengeance for his brother. The one that Maya one-shotted like a minute ago. Maya one-shots him too. The explosion from her attack causes debris to fall from the sky and hit Asahi, freeing him from Alabama hypnosis. The debris takes out the Groots too, so Maya takes matters into her own hands and tries to hypnotize Asahi herself, but it doesn't work. The siblings decide to go back home. 
When Asahi goes to look for a new quest at the guild, he's told that Tanya isn't available. He bumps into her on his way home and almost doesn't recognize her in her beautiful outfit. She tells him that she just took a day off to spend time with her little brother, Roy. When the little brother hears that he's Asahi, the town's famous ogre-class adventurer who one-shots dragons and demons, he starts glazing hard and asks Tanya to let Asahi escort them. Asahi agrees. On their way, they are attacked by a dragon, which destroys their carriage. Tanya and Roy stand back and wait for the ogre-class rank adventurer to save them. He tries to swing, but his attack only does one HP damage to the dragon. The dragon charges up to eliminate them all. Asahi uses his level 1 stone throwing skill to toss a rock inside the dragon's mouth, and it self-destructs harder than a Tesla. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! After that, they continue to their destination. The following afternoon, when Asahi and his sisters come back from a quest, Asahi realizes that he's leveled up. He unlocks light magic and gets a new spell. A raging bull comes charging towards them, and Asahi decides to test his new spell. He gets hyped, thinking that he's gonna be an OP light magic user like the Wizard King from Black Clover, but his spell is literally just light. For their next quest, they are tasked by a noble family, the House of Brigandine, to take out Dark Crisis, a clan of scammers. Tanya explains that they sell forged guild IDs and help people falsify their ranks. They take out the guards and break into the Dark Crisis hideout, where they are confronted by the clan's leader, Lightning Strike Lombert, a real ogre class rank. Right when they're about to face off, and Maya and Kilmaria are ready to make Lomber regret ever being born, Sophie shows up with a crowd and tells Asahi that she brought more people to witness his great powers. Since there's a crowd, Maya and Kilmaria can't directly interfere, so when Lombert swings at Asahi, Maya breaks his sword. While he's trying to figure out what's even happening, Asahi finishes him off, and the crowd cheers. Maya expects to be rewarded, though, in other ways. In another criminal clan hideout, we see Gloria, a noble, and her servant taking out another criminal clan leader, a Lizzo-sized man. Gloria asks Kuan which adventurers she assigned to clear out the Dark Crisis hideout, and Kuan tells her that they hired Asahi Ikusaba, the hotshot ogre-class rookie who shot up the ranks in a week. Gloria tells Kuan that she suspects fraud in Asahi's rise to glory, so she is going to test Asahi's strength herself to see if he's not a fraud. The villagers that Asahi, I mean Maya, saved from the orcs before, invite Asahi to a party. When he gets there, they tell him that there's no party, they just need him to save their village from orcs again. Realizing that Maya is not around to save him this time around, Asahi mans up and faces the orcs head on. The leader, who is the older half-brother of the orcs that were one-shotted by Maya before, charges at Asahi, knocking him down in one swing. Luckily for him, Kuan and Gloria come out. Gloria splits the orc's leader in half. She then turns to Asahi and tells him that, from watching him fight, there is no way in hell he is even ranked anywhere near ogre class. Asahi refuses to confess that he's a fraud, so she asks for a duel. Asahi gets in his stance, and from a distance, Maya destroys the ground between them. Gloria manages to evade the attack, but Asahi catches her lacking. Every time! Her guts this wide open! To reclaim her honor and prove to everyone that Asahi is a fraud, she challenges him to a duel in a public arena. Maya offers to assist him behind the shadows, but Asahi doesn't want to risk getting caught in 4K, so he decides to man the F up and win this fight on his own. Kuon watches over Maya and Kilmaria to make sure that they don't assist Asahi behind the scenes. At first, all Asahi does is evade Gloria's attacks, but he then takes his fighting stance. While she's doing backflips, he uses his light spell to blind her, and she drops her sword. Because she's not holding a weapon, she is forced to forfeit the duel, thus making Asahi the winner of their battle. Gloria asks why Asahi didn't swing at her during the fight, and he tells her that he's not dark-skinned. He doesn't beat on women. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! This makes Gloria feel some type of way, and she runs out of the arena. The next morning, Asahi and Maya attend their next quest, accompanied by Sophie aka the Troublemaker. 
There's a fork in the road, so they decide to split up. Asahi asks Maya to take Sophie with her, so that she doesn't cause trouble for him. As soon as they leave, goblins try to jump Asahi, but Kilmaria shows up and saves his worthless life. She goes on a drunk rant about how much she loves Asahi, but their conversation is interrupted by screams coming from the woods. Asahi goes in to investigate and finds a disgusting bug sucking the life out of villagers, like literally. Upon seeing Asahi, the disgusting creature summons the undead, but Asahi takes them out. While he's distracted, the bug sneaks behind him and starts sucking his soul, but he gets rescued by Kilmaria. When the disgusting bug recognizes her, he starts glazing her hard, hoping that she's gonna join his side, but she puts him ten feet under. The stolen souls return to the owners, and Asahi regroups with the others. Back in town, Kuan wakes Gloria and dresses her up. She reminds Gloria to follow the plan. When Asahi goes back to the guild, he gets the credit for destroying the bug guy, certifying his position as the biggest fraud in anime history, only second to Satoru Gojo from JJK. On his way home, he bumps into Gloria and Kuon, and they ask him to accompany them on a quest. Their actual plan, though, is for Kuon to leave Gloria alone with Asahi in the forest, so that they can have their first date. The plan is interrupted when they find a vegan kidnapping people in the woods. The vegan grabs Gloria while she's busy glazing Asahi. She screams for Asahi to rescue her, but when she looks back, she realizes that Asahi has caught her lacking yet again. After destroying the vegan, they all go back to town. Gloria and Kuon ask Asahi to help them move into their new home. When it's time for them to leave the old house, they are stopped by Sebastian, a servant that looks after Gloria. He tries to stop Gloria with his weak Doflamingo wannabe strings, but gets tossed aside faster than a sock after beating your meat. Sebastian figures that it must be Asahi who is influencing Gloria to act rebellious, so he contracts a 42-year-old Wolverine wannabe to assassinate him. But Maya pops up behind them and lets them know that as long as she's around, ain't nobody assassinating nothing. After making Asahi drink a hundred cups of tea like an average British, Gloria asks Kuon if she has any idea how they can convince Asahi to move in with them. Kuon suggests that they convince Asahi to form a clan and use this new house as his clan's base. That way, Gloria would practically be able to live with Asahi forever. Asahi likes the idea of forming a clan, so he goes straight to Tanya to get more information. Sophie overhears his conversation with Tanya and asks to join his clan too. The next day, Asahi comes back from a quest petrified. He's conscious and able to observe everything happening, but unable to speak or move his body. The girls try to cure him by getting him in a hot tub. When that doesn't work, Maya considers trying to cure him with a smooch, but Kilmaria arrives in time to stop her. Kilmaria uses her magic to cure Asahi. He comes out in a traumatic state though, because of what he saw in the tub. The next morning, they finish up the application for the clan. Maya names their clan the Super Asahi Legion. Their first quest as a clan is a shark hunt. They are tasked with exterminating the sharks terrorizing Lupercalia Beach. When they get to the beach, Quan and Gloria reveal that they arrived earlier and defeated all the sharks. Since the quest is basically complete, they decide to take the day off to have some beach fun. Kuon gives the other girls bikinis that make them look like thoughts, but gives Gloria the best looking bikini. This is to ensure that Asahi's eyes only stay on Gloria. Her plan is interrupted by Kill Maria, who hogs all of Asahi's attention when she shows up wearing seashells. Kuon switches to plan B. She decides to set up a volleyball game in which the girls compete for Asahi. Asahi has to do whatever the winner requests. Gloria wants to use it to get some alone time with him. Unlucky for them, Maya wins the match and orders Asahi to give her a massage. They hear screams coming from the water and see sharks surrounding the girls. One of the sharks catches Asahi lacking and he starts drowning. Maya goes in to save him, but they end up in another part of the island. Seeing that there's no one around, Maya tries to take him to Alabama, but the King Shark finds them and transforms into his final form. Furious that King Shark ruined her once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to take her little brother's V-card, Maya one-shots King Shark. After that, they all go back to playing on the beach. 
The next morning, their whole town is attacked by slimes and demons. They figure that the portals and slimes are controlled by a mastermind hiding somewhere in the town. So Maya and Kilmaria take off to look for this mastermind. Meanwhile, Tanya asks Asahi to find her little brother Roy. Asahi finds Roy, but they get cornered by a slime. They are saved by the Ohio Viking and Siegfried. Siegfried advises Asahi to take the kids to the town cathedral, where all the injured townspeople are getting treated. Maya and Kilmaria find the mastermind, an ugly witch named Guriligula, part of the Demon King's army. She invites Kilmaria to join her in destroying the town. Kilmaria declines. They clap the witch harder than Will Smith did to Chris Rock. Gloria and Kuon find Asahi, and the three of them manage to track down the slime's core. Asahi asks Gloria and Kuon to throw him into the air. He uses his level one stone throwing skill to destroy the slime's core, thereby saving the town. After this, Asahi gets promoted to golem class, and the girls throw him a celebration party. To reward him for saving the town, the girls tell Asahi that he's going to get a kiss from one of them, and they play rock paper scissors to decide. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, please hit that like button and hit subscribe for more videos like this one.